it's 1993 and we're in the age of Mario and Sonic. Star Fox and Secret of Mana had just released and Nintendo have released a smaller version of the NES. Who would have seen that coming? Hype is brewing because a new character is about to arrive and that is Bubsy. Simply presented as a bobcat with attitude and dressed in a white t-shirt and nothing below, Bubsy was planning on taking over the world on release in May 1993. We'll be taking a look at the Bubsy series as a whole, from the original 1993 release, taking on the sequels across the different platforms, and having a look at that really bizarre cartoon pilot. What could possibly go wrong? Claw's Encounters of the Third Kind is a 2D platformer for the SNES and Genesis, where the aim of the game is to collect wool. Your mortal enemies are the Woolies, evil aliens wanting to steal the Earth's supply of wool, and from the look of things sneeze in your general direction, you control Bubsy, an overly sassy bobcat who just happens to be the owner of the biggest stash of yarn balls in the world. Bubsy's only defense in this game is his ability to jump and your main chance of killing the invading aliens. He's able to glide long distances. And another main attribute of Bubsy, like Sonic, is his extremely fast running speed. And there are very big differences between Bubsy and Sonic's ability to race through levels. Here we see Sonic. He's doing great. He'll get all the lady hedgehogs tonight, but for Bubsy, it's not so easy. Not only is the level design not planned with speed in mind, but Bubsy is easily one of the most frail video game characters around. It may have seemed humorous that an enemy sneezing on you would be a form of attack, but in this game it's lethal. With that in mind, every time you die he repeats his catchphrase, and considering all the incredibly varied ways he can die, it gets a little bit ridiculous. You're sneezed on. You're abducted by a car. You're drowning. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Continuing with the Sonic inspiration, every time you complete a level, you hit a giant yarn ball which turns into a spinning sign with your face on it. The truth is Bubsy's controls don't feel great. You slip and slide and it usually means accidental falls and burning through his nine lives. This game will constantly punish you for its controls. As you progress through the game, levels change and things really start to look bizarre. Look at that face. I'm sorry, Bubsy. <laughs> levels 4 to 6 are fairground themed. The level design is beginning to get quite creative, but absolutely nothing will make sense. Great strong aubergine men, these things, and possibly the creepiest apple you will ever see. Wild West levels always starting on trains transporting hipster giraffes, lake-based levels with music that wouldn't seem out of place in a Donkey Kong or Banjo game, safari-based levels and beyond. The variety is almost there, but still, the controls and being unable to take the slightest amount of damage hampers the game from being ranked amongst the games it's inspired by. Moving on a year into 1994 and the big titles were coming out, Earthworm Jim made his first hyped appearance, Doom 2 was finally released and just before the Christmas period, Donkey Kong Country was ready to stun the world with its pre-rendered 3D graphics. It was also the year for two new Bubsy titles, and the first one being Bubsy 2. The game was developed due to the success of the original, and without the original designer Michael Berlin's help, the game received incredible criticism from Berlin claiming that they had just about killed the franchise. This time things began differently. We're now inside some sort of spaceship. We're even given a view of two new characters, Bubsy's niece and nephew from the Bubsy's cancelled cartoon show from the previous year. All that exists is the pilot episode and I can't stress this enough. Do not watch this cartoon. It is so bad. The cartoon depicts Bubsy as obnoxious and moronic as humanly possible. Living with his friend Arnold, an armadillo seriously traumatized by his fear of trucks. Come on, Arnold, old buddy! Wake up! <laughs> it's me, the Prince of Personality, Bubsy! Bubsy! Sexual assault aside, Bubsy's nephew and niece come over to stay for their birthday and promptly continue the sustained harassment of Arnold. These are the co-op characters for Bubsy 2. Back in the game you have two choices, the East Wing or the West. Each direction leads to a choice of stages, Egyptian, Pirate, Drum, Plane and Medieval. But each wing has different levels. 
Personally, the thought of Bubsy gliding around a pirate level sounds amazing, so here we go. Wait a minute, pirates? Okay, so the pirate level is actually in space, but one of the best things to point out is that you're no longer killed instantly, which is great. Well, unless you touch things like this. It literally looks like something in the background. Yarn balls are now replaced by orbs for the sequel, but the level plan is still the same. Find the end and spin the ball. Now if only I could find the bastard. Ignoring the pirate level just being in space, most levels are straightforward. The Egyptian level has Bubsy in a tomb, the medieval stages are pretty straightforward too, the music levels are bizarre though. Oh, um, okay. Oh, oh my god. Bubsy's in a plane, how could this go wrong? But it's awkward, and it feels like I'm a mass murderer. These pigs were probably just having a nice day out and I've just killed them all. It's good that the devs took time to fix one of the main issues with the original, but the bad controls are still there, and some of the game mechanics feel incomplete. But they did try to be creative. They even have a frog murdering minigame. Christmas time and Bubsy was making one final appearance in 1994 for the Atari Jaguar in a game called Fractured Furry Tales. This game was developed separately by Imagitech Design, a company responsible for games like Raiden and The Humans. The opening credits already feel different and the graphics too. The levels are based on famous fairy tales opening with Alice in Wonderland. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. But it's already noticeable that they reverted back to insta-death. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh And this game catches you out so often. In 1995, Bubsy 2 was released for the Game Boy, and it's apparently a version that was so different from the original SNES and Genesis version, so uh, we're gonna load it up and we're gonna see what it's like. Bubsy 2. We only have access to the Grand Tour, a simple choice of three levels for each floor. We'll start with the music stage. And here it is. Almost like something out of a nightmare, you spawn inside a creature's mouth in a world full of black. The way is guided by something that looks like a lizard man, and I'm gliding and I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going. It looks like Bubsy's developed a new attack for this game. Alright, never mind. At least the notes made it into this version. Oh my god. Just look at the difference. After a while of casually gliding in the dark, I managed to find the end. Now this guy can dance. Moving on to the plane stage in his game of nightmares. Alright, it's pretty much what I expected. Oh shit, this can't be good. Abort, 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 abort! A big problem in this game is that you can only have one bullet on screen. Which brings on problems like this. I now think I've broken the game. Oh dear, it seems as though Oinka rules the day again. Better luck next time. Probably a terrible thing that we're in a re-release of a video game and I only just know the name of the bad guy. Moving on to the Egyptian level and I haven't seen anyone for a long time. And now we're here. One more try. Okay, seriously, I'm actually using all my strength here. Oh, come on. Are you serious? Alright, I got it, I got it. I'm going, I'm going, I've done it, I've done And I'm done. Was this the end for Bubsy? The end of awkward controls and insta-death? Would we never see a woolly again? But then, Michael Berlin came home. Following his outrage at the state of Bubsy 2, original designer Berlin came back on board and started designing a new game. Bubsy was back. Berlin teamed up with a games company called Adetic, later renamed as SCE Ben Studio, and in October 1996, two years after Fractured Furry Tales, Bubsy 3D was released. Now I do have to mention this was released a single month after Super Mario 64, a game that would set the standards for 3D platformers. But surely Bubsy 3D couldn't be that bad. Bubsy 3D. The story follows the Woolies' failure to bring back the Earth's supply of wool. 
The Woolies are preparing a new invasion plan and in the process capture the Bobcat and plan on keeping him captive. However, following a crash, the Woolies accidentally unleash Bubsy on their own planet. Alright, so the story doesn't make sense, but it's Bubsy. Nothing is ever explained. What's the obsession with wool? Why do they want a planet supply of wool? Alright, that's cause your planet looks like shit. And this is where the pain begins. Wow, you wanna be a video game star? For starters, grab all the items you see. There's plenty of them in each level. And if you get enough of them, you'll be in for some surprises. This is the death of Bobsy. The series has had its problems, but this takes it to a new extreme. Previous games had control problems, but this is the worst. Your mission is to collect atoms and rockets, and the controls make it nearly impossible. Instead of insta-death, you have the fun of being knocked out for two seconds. Due to the worst hit detection and complete lack of logic and explanation, this will break you as a human being. If you wanted to sum up the game in one sequence, this is my attempt at killing a woolly on a thin platform. Considering you're introduced to platforms in the opening moments, jumping is a main factor throughout. But the problem is that it's pretty much impossible to know where you're jumping. If you almost make a jump, he'll grab on and you'll survive. If you accidentally overstep, you will plummet to your death. I mean, that's logic, right? Now I don't want to criticize the designers. Maybe the Woolies really did live on a textureless planet with weird squares everywhere. Okay, graphically this is terrible. The scenery is just in textured blocks and there's no background. Oh wait, the boss level has one. Along the way you meet some pretty terrifying enemies. This guy almost gave me a heart attack when I first saw him. And this guy is just weird. Yeah, that's the one, Bubs. The game genuinely deserves applause for being consistently bad, but something that makes me warm inside is the fact that the pause button gives you a selfie. <laughs> yeah, take that Wind Waker HD. Here's a scared selfie, a flying selfie, me and a woolly about to fall off a platform. The comparison with Super Mario 64 is unfair. The game both revolutionized the genre and it had twice the power through the next gen console. But what you can compare it to is Crash Bandicoot. Released exactly two months before Bubsy 3D on the same console, Crash Bandicoot exceeds it in every aspect. Although it's not perfect, it's better graphically with scenery and actual textures being used. The controls feel better, the music is decent, and the level design works. I'm trying not to attack Berlin here. He attempted to take his game into the next generation. You have to understand that this was the early days of 3D, but this is just bad. There is nothing worth playing for in this game. Bubsy's video game career lasted three years and spanned over four original titles, but it never learned from its mistakes. Poor controls and frustrating deaths never went away in the series, and all of the games after the original felt rushed and unfinished. I'll probably be the only YouTube guy who after all this claims that there's still hope for Bubsy. 17 years have passed, Berlin has left the game industry and the company's dissolved into Atari. But there's still a chance to make a good game from the franchise. With an actual storyline and a genuine world for the character, it's possible. But you need new designers and great ideas behind it. And controls. Good controls would be nice. Hey guys, thank you for watching, I appreciate it so much. If you liked the video in the slightest, then make sure to leave a like or a subscribe. It would help me out so much, please. If you do feel like you're one of those guys that would be like, Hey, I like this video, I just, I, I'll like it, then that would be amazing. Uh, thank you guys so much, uh, appreciate the support, and uh, leave a comment if you want to tell me how crap I am at playing video games. Thank you. Never have to play Bubsy again. I never have to play Bubsy again. I never have to play Bubsy again. I never have to play Bubsy again.